In this video I want to cover the complex conjugate root theorem. Now there's nothing complex about this theorem, it is very simple and it simply states if a equals a plus ib is a root of the polynomial p of x of degree n is greater than or equal to 2 with real coefficients then beta equals a minus ib is also a root of p of x. Now this is pretty much written in my own words so for a more formal definition you may want to look it up on Wikipedia which I'll leave a link to in the description below but it basically says if a complex number is a root or a zero of a polynomial and it has to be at least a quadratic polynomial then the complex conjugate is also a root of that polynomial. So with that said let's do an example if alpha equals a half minus root 3 on 2i is a root of p of x equaling x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 find all the other roots. Okay the first thing we'll do is we'll test whether alpha is really a root of p of x and to do that I'll rearrange p of x a little bit to make it easier to substitute alpha into so I'm going to write p of x as equal to I'll factor out a x squared from the first three terms so x squared outside of x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 then this simplifies to x squared by x plus 1 all squared minus 1 so the first step now is to test if p of a half minus root 3 on 2i gives us the answer of 0. So we evaluate a half minus root 3 on 2i squared by a half minus root 3 on 2i plus 1 squared minus 1 the first squared term evaluates to minus a half plus root 3 on 2i and you can satisfy yourself that this is the result. The second square is equal to minus a half minus root 3 on 2i and we are left with the remaining term minus 1. So here we have a case of complex conjugate multiplication so z by z bar and the result of this is simply the real component squared plus the imaginary component squared so we have one quarter plus three quarters minus one which of course equals one minus one which is equal to zero so therefore alpha is equal to a half minus root three on two i is a root of p of x and then by the complex conjugate root theorem we can say that beta is equal to a half plus the root 3 on 2i is also a root so beta is simply equal to alpha bar and it is also a root of p of x. Okay now that we have the roots alpha and beta then x minus alpha and x minus beta are factors of the polynomial px. So if we then expand this expression so we get x squared minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta and let's evaluate each of these components. So alpha plus beta is simply a case of z plus z bar which is equal to 2 times the real component which in this case is a half negative a half uh, times 2 which is equal to negative 1 so we get x squared plus x and alpha times beta in this case is a case another case of z times z bar and we know the result to this so the real component squared is one quarter 
and the imaginary component squared is 3 quarters. So 1 quarter plus 3 quarters is equal to 1. Now let's divide p of x by this factor, x squared plus x plus 1. So p of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared plus, we didn't have a linear coefficient, but I'll put it down as a placeholder anyway. So we say 0x, then minus 1, and then we divide by x squared plus x plus 1. So I need to multiply x squared by x squared to get x to the fourth. So x squared by x squared is x to the fourth. x squared by x is x cubed. And x squared by 1 is x squared. And I take the new line from the line above and I end up with x cubed plus 0x squared and then we bring down the 0x. To get x cubed I need to multiply by an x. So x by x squared is x cubed plus x squared plus x. And I subtract the new line from the line above to get minus x squared minus x and we bring down the negative 1. And uh, to get this expression I simply multiply by negative 1 so we get minus x squared minus x minus 1 and the remainder is 0. So p of x can be expressed as x squared plus x plus 1 by x squared plus x minus 1. And we found the factors of the first group already. Now we simply find the factors of the second group through the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times negative 1 all over 2 and this gives us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. So finally the two other roots are gamma is equal to negative 1 plus root 5 on 2 and delta is equal to negative 1 minus root 5 on 2. And that is the end of the solution. So please give me a like if this video has helped you to better understand the complex conjugate root theorem. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. And do not hesitate to ask me any questions using the comments below. In the meantime, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.